$50 back when you order a 360 internet package starting as low as $29.99 a month for a year. Power up with fast speeds and supercharge every room with whole home Wi-Fi 360 Pro. Shop online today. that life has no meaning and the world is here for no reason. Do a little dance, make absolutely no love, get incredibly down tonight. Suddenly existentialism is getting popular. The main idea being, okay, maybe we aren't here for divine reasons and the world has no absolute purpose, but that's kind of neat because it means you have no shackles, beholden neither to gods nor kings. First and foremost, you're not an employee or a citizen or a digital nomad, but a person. First, you are a person, also meaning that every decision is your own, but also meaning no one is coming to the rescue. And most importantly, no one is really in charge. And it's hard not to sympathize today with that. Have you looked around? Where are the real adults? Billionaires don't seem all that happy. Politicians don't seem all that uncorrupted. And personally, I won't be taking any life advice from someone who dresses up as a chess piece. The beauty of that anarchy, though, one can self-create meaning. Life is not something done to one, but something one does. Albert Camus had other ideas, though. If an Algerian thinker, originally destined to be a footballer until he cut out his destination, Camus agreed with some of existentialism and some of his but he agreed about the medicine. Sure, we're abandoned to the freedom of the body, but still not. The real problem is that we are to use any of the meaning and purpose to get them to the next step in the universe that is more or less and apparently completely apathetic to us. We will be happy, matched, and dismatched, all the while probably never working out what was going for. I don't know if you like that, but you can use that for this video. Well, for my reasons, there are maybe a number of sorts of matching available to us in part of the victim's situation. One, we're choosing to play the game and join the end of life. And don't do that, please. Two, we want to play, or play some space in the country that there is no need for someone. This could be anything from a reason of the game, Same kind of horror. 
Say that, Virgil. What's it say about your grooming? Yeah, each a unique technology change. So new consequences that have to be wrestled with each time. Disorganized gun violence. Disorganized hikamori. I'm saying this on my phone, but disorganized hikamori. Like, that's not compelled by anybody. You choose to take yourself out of the Japanese society. That's how debates work, though. That's literally how they always work. Because, yeah, everyone has to be, like you said earlier, everyone has to be given equal time, so both points get to be made in in, in as crystalline a form, like, as perfectly as possible in those two minutes. That's the base, I think, teaching, and neither of us has studied debate, but, like, that, that idea, just, like, he says it, because he said the good point, we kind of just have to move on. Like, you have to, like, as the viewer, keep it. And I think we could be more explicit about like, well, that's a good point. That's it. That's that's heuristical. We're gonna go the rest of our lives using that to inform us. We should be explicit about that. Anyway, because he's talking about another layer. Antisocial behavior causes the violence. Punching up with violence. I love this guy. <laughs> So, good counter hegemony here, you don't need to pause this. Yeah, good counter hegemony here would be simply showing a clip of all the, like, 
like the actual percentage of video games that are this violent to video games that aren't this violent. And I know it's not an easy system to map out, but if you showed Animal Crossing, Celeste, bop, 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 and then this trailer, doesn't matter how many minutes of this trailer you show, if you showed an equal amount of time of all the good games, you've at least shown that 50% of games are not violent. Yeah, that's science. Thank you. Great point. Science and dark energy, very tied together, because science decides what is dark energy. Keep going. Yeah. Dead by Daylight, uh, which is still popular. This is from like Call of Duty. Call of Duty, Couple yeah. Of Call of Duty version. Yeah. Yes. Well, and also, do you think they're antisocial though, or do you think that part of it, like they're they're propaganda, but are they antisocial? Or cause antisocial behavior. The chat in the Xbox Live could be antisocial. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess that's my point. Is this? The, and I think that's Virgil's point, and this is a fair point. Like, you can show the most extreme moments from a bunch of movies and be like, wow, we should movies. Like, yeah. more than video games, I could show you a bunch of scenes from movies and tell you we should ban all movies. That's not what the government should be doing. And that's what liberal capitalism as a government can do and only can do. That's the problem. We're stuck having their conversation. This whole eight minutes is their conversation and a guy trying to say, look, this format isn't working. So let's play. And Vir real quick, even Virgil starts the argument. He's not the one saying this. He's the one that says, this is the thing. He says, this has already been tested, so it shouldn't be dealt with. You fucking Anon. Vaccines. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. We we learned that when Trump was elected. But like, like, it doesn't matter. People get to decide if this is their vision. The exception. This is campy. Also interesting, he said shooter RPG, and it's Fallout on the screen. point is no we're not gonna ban them too that's his point Virgil yes Yes. 
Uh, wait. Virgil and Matt. <laughs> I'm gonna try and do this because this is exactly right. Yes, the PC and PC thing is definitely something I'm gonna get into. Like, that is such a mind trip that people actually think that way about this stuff. If you really think about that, uh, how how this but uh, there was something. Oh, so the reason this whole this whole point you've stopped on is great. Is this is everything Matt was talking about in the last year from COVID. And Virgil, and this is where the thing about I have to watch is not looking for an Alex, looking for a Joe, or something specific to describe. Because for all we know, Matt has literally just spent the last year working out a personal hatred for the way this guy sees the world. Because this guy sees the world in the way he hates it. And this guy, I think, is objectively culturally sicker than that person as far as we know. He's, you know, we'll find out later. But, like, to say, he is literally verbatim describing, as an adult person, I should have the ability to access everything and anything all of the time. Tom York sang about that in 2000. We've been thinking about this since since the 90s. This noise thing I keep coming back to is tied to it. If you can do anything you want all of the time, you will not stop. You have no pulse of energy to do that. And if you can live in a big simulation, you don't even need the planet to be that sustainable. You just need the energy system to sustain the neural network also. And the transactions that he is worshipping here, this right to spend your hard-earned money on any media you choose, is how you will be tricked into participating in that system until it becomes your life. Because I literally experienced that with fucking work for the last 15 years. And that's what I've been trying to tell people. That is that. The same thing he's describing is this trap we're all in. And that is my argument. This guy is sad. These are sad fuckers who can't figure this shit out. Because when you've decided that video games are an art form that have power and meaning and that excites you, you want to share it with people, and then instead everyone says, no, that's antisocial, instead of it being, how do we rechange the framework to not have it be antisocial, to use the technology safely and correctly, not compelled, but by ourselves, choosing to, the answer comes from getting rid of capitalism. Like, it, it has to be that. Because literally, you're look, he's an example of what happens. Oh, I watched the video after this. Oh, I haven't been on chapel for the last year. Mister, you know, I wanted to write a book. And all that. Oh, he probably got called out for the first time and had to take some time off. He's not going to tell the truth. Not in liberal capitalism, ever. He's fucking holding, he's a vampire holding onto his pearls as far as we know. And he might not even be a real vampire. He might be the fourth generation of vampires. Somebody bit somebody, but bit somebody that bit somebody that bit him. But it's fucked him up. And I think you're seeing it right here, right now. Eight minutes in. Lay it on us, Matt. Right? But you can. There's a cerebral argument there. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Those, those changes, the, 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 the e banking, certainly e warfare. E warfare. Is a change that reduces our humanity, and that we should try to fight against that tide instead of just heedlessly going forward until we're willingly jacking ourselves into the matrix pod. Yeah, but gentlemen, we, we've got to leave it there. But <laughs> definitely an interesting debate, one that I'm sure will continue. We saw similar uh, discussions around rap music. So uh, we'll, see, uh, he got his piece in there. Sure. All right, virtual Texas man. Rap Christmas music. Thing. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is the best. This is the final Chapel podcast. Chapel Trap House. Thank you for both for being here on I-24. Check out the book. All right. So he didn't get to have his last point, but he got to tell you to check out the book. That's liberal capitalism. To be fair, 